Today's nap time story time is Aunt Harriet's Underground Railroad in the Sky, written by Faith Ringgold. Artwork by Faith Ringgold, too. Aunt Harriet's Underground Railroad in the Sky. This book is dedicated to my big sister, Barbara Knight. She was never afraid of anything. She is no longer alive, but her spirit is. Barbara would have taken a ride on Aunt Harriet's Underground Railroad in the sky, and I would have followed her blindly in mortal fear of going home without her. Thanks to my daughter, Barbara Wallace, for the research on Harriet Tubman that appears in this book. And to Janet Shulman, my publisher at Crown, for suggesting Harriet Tubman as a subject for a second book. It is exactly what I wanted to do. And to Simon Bouton, my editor, for believing it could fly. One day, my baby brother B.B. and I were flying among the stars, way, way up, so far up, the mountains looked like pieces of rock candy and the oceans like tiny cups of tea. We came across an old ramshackle train in the sky. A tiny woman in a conductor's uniform appeared on the steps of the train and announced the schedule. All aboard! All aboard! Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Niagara Falls, Canada. All aboard! All aboard! Hundreds of bedraggled men, women, and children filled the sky and boarded the dusty old wooden train. No one spoke. It was like watching a silent movie. Come on, Cassie, B.B. said, jumping up on the train. Let's take a ride. Go free north or die. I'll tell mommy and daddy, and you will be in a world of trouble, I yelled. But the train quickly moved off through the sky and disappeared. All I could see now were flashing lights, sending a threatening message through a, cloud, through a sea of clouds. Go free north or die. Go free north or die. Go free north or die. BB, come back. Mommy and Daddy will never forgive me for letting you go, I screamed. Then the woman conductor's voice came like a soft whisper in my ear. Hello, Cassie. I am Harriet Tubman. People call me Aunt Harriet because I take care of them. During slavery, I carried hundreds of men, women, and children to freedom on the Underground Railroad and never lost a passenger. Captain Bondage. Let me tell you about slavery, Cassie, Aunt Harriet said. We were brought here from Africa as slaves to work long hours on plantations for no pay. More of us died on the ships coming over than ever reached the shores. If we tried to escape and were caught, we might have a foot cut off or get sold away from our families. And then we never saw our families or friends again. A legal or church marriage was not allowed. So instead, a man and woman would jump the broom. It was against the law for a slave to learn to read or write.
or have a meeting or even to preach the word of God. Every 100 years, that old train will follow the same route I traveled on the Underground Railroad so that we will never forget the cost of freedom. Sometimes the train is a farmer's wagon. Sometimes it's a hearse covered with flowers. Inside, a live slave hides in a coffin. You miss this train, Cassie, but you can follow always one step behind. When we reach freedom in Canada, you will be reunited, reunited with BB. Cassie, though you can fly, being a slave will suck you to the ground like quicksand. You will have to walk many miles through the woods and waters on blistered feet. And there will be bounty hunters eager to collect the reward on your head. Follow the North Star. In daylight, look for moss growing on the side of the tree that faces north. Along the way, there will be underground railroad agents to give you a place to stay, clean clothes, and food. But until you reach Canada, you are not safe. Go and don't turn back. And remember, if you are caught, you will be severely punished. First, you must escape from the slave plantation. Tell no one. Wait until night falls so you will not be seen. Then follow the trail through the woods to a gray farmhouse on the river. Your first night will be the hardest. Listen carefully to the song of the birds. When you are in danger, their song will become screams that only you can hear. Then you must stop and head in the opposite direction. When you lie down to rest, you will hear me sing the old spiritual. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Let me lullaby you on to sleep. When I stop singing and you hear the birds scream, wake up, move on. I reached the great farmhouse on the river. I slept in the farmer's attic. It was dark and scary. Cobwebs hung from the ceiling like gray ghosts, but the farmer and his wife were very kind. There was a note under the pillow. Dear Cassie, I am very frightened. But I am a big boy, and I will not turn back. Love, B.B. Then Aunt Harriet's voice came on like a gust of wind. Follow the river north until you reach a clapboard house with green shutters and a red brick chimney. There will be a blind railroad agent who will ask you to sing a song. You will sing Go Down Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. She will give you food and a place to sleep. By nightfall, you must be on your way through the woods. I found BB's baseball cap floating in a swamp. It was worn to shreds. I squeezed the mud out of it. Leave the cap, Cassie, Aunt Harriet's whispering voice said. Go on to a weather-beaten frame house with a star quilt flung on the roof. If you don't see the quilt, hide in the woods until it appears. Then it is safe to go in. The next night, follow the road to the bridge several miles away. I traveled through the woods and swamps. It was I was cold, wet, and very hungry but I could not turn back. When I reached the bridge, I hid in a graveyard on a hill overlooking the river. It was there I found BB's toy soldiers and a set of baseball cards buried alongside the grave of a boy BB's age. I was too afraid to cry. I lay awake until I heard Aunt Harry's familiar whisper. Wait for the railroad agent disguised as a grave digger. He will say, I bring you a ticket for the railroad. 
Now the tears came stringing, streaming down my cheeks like rain. I would see BB soon, soon, soon. In a tiny yellow house on the edge of the city, a little girl my age gave me a ticket for the steam car and so the fake pass to freedom she had made on my undershirt. It read, Cassie Louise Lightfoot, freeborn in New York. Show that to anyone who tries to take you back to the slave's plantation, she said. I reached the back door of a shoemaker's house and knocked three times. That time, I slept in a secret room behind a bookcase. BB had been there and left another note. Dear Cassie, I have a new baby sister. She was born today. Her name is Freedom. Her mother got sick and went to heaven. Let me carry baby Freedom on my back. She let me carry baby Freedom on my back. Love, BB. After a few days rest, I started out again with new shoes the shoemaker made me. Move on, Cassie, Aunt Harriet's voice told me. You are very close to the border of the free state of Pennsylvania. Look for the letter P written on a rock facing north, but still beware of bounty hunters. They can kidnap you at any time. Until you reach Canada, you are not safe. In New York, a bookbinder hid me in a secret compartment he had built into his wagon. In a downpour of rain, he delivered me to a funeral parlor. There was a funeral going on, so no one noticed me. The undertaker gave me a withered rose Baby had left, pressed in a book with a note. Dear Cassie, we stayed at the house of a millionaire. He gave Aunt Harriet a bunch of money. We will never be hungry again. Love, B.B. The undertaker gave me a fresh cut rose, hid me in a coffin in his hearse, and took me to Niagara Falls. Now I was just over the bridge from Canada. Niagara Falls looked like a giant tea party with a billion cups of steaming hot tea being poured into a resounding applause. The steam from the falls formed a soft blanket that lifted me up, up, up above the hall, falls and across the bridge to Canada. I could fly. I was free. I could see Aunt Harriet and BB with baby freedom still tied to his back. The passengers on the Underground Railroad and women all dressed in white flying in a huge circle around them. We're free, we're free. We have shook the lion's paw, Aunt Harriet yelled in a voice that shot through the air like a joyous bolt of lightning. And let my people go, the others sang out. I kissed BB over and over and I made him promise he'd never ever leave me again. I love you, Cassie, but I had to go, B.B. said. Freedom is more important than just staying together. And what's more, I got to ride on the underground freedom with Harriet Tubman. Now I know what our great-great-grandparents survived when they were children. That day, there was a big feast and a quilt celebrating the 100th anniversary of Harriet Tubman's first flight to freedom hung in the sky. People came to eat, dance, and sing praise to Aunt Harriet for taking us from slavery to freedom and for being the Moses of her people. This tells you a biography of the life of Harriet Tubman and some more places you can go for research. This shows you the roots of the Underground Railroad. Here we are in New York and there was the route to Canada. And as I always tell you at the end of the story, now, go take your nap.